My name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And, and we are the Yahoo Tour YouTube channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for joining us. This is truly our family that is sitting here amongst us. We are the few, we are the happy, and we are Yah's people. And we thank you guys so much for hanging out with us on this beautiful Shabbat day, wherever you guys are at. And I know a lot of you guys are in some cold, cold places with a lot of snow and it's super cold and I hope you guys are finding enjoyment there. I hope you guys are all staying warm. Um, for us down here, um, I don't want to gloat, but it is a nice whopping 78 degrees with the sun shining and it is just a very nice sunny day here. And so for those, I do remember the cold days of the winters when I was back in North America and uh, we lived in Idaho and it was, it was very cold. We lived in Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, all of those areas right there and so for on the side of the west coast that was cold and so i know your guys's pain and much love to you guys so today on our creator's calendar it is the ninth month on our creator's calendar it is the uh 16th day on his calendar that would make it the 10th day on the babylonian satanic calendar which is um the december and so here we are. Gentlemen, how are you guys doing? How's everyone out there? Good, good, good. How is um, our friends, our family out there in the chat room? Miss Nicole, who do we got hanging with we us? We have Brother Glenn. Brother Glenn. We also have, hold on, my screen's being funny. We have Tessie. I saw Tess in there. Cindy LJ. Hey, it's Dr yep, Drudge Deplorable's in there. Oh, he must just popped in. He popped in. Sylvia. 
The Grand. Miss Ewarts, much love to you, dear sis. Big Zach, hugs to you. Zach Rezzy. Oh, Zach. Zach and the Slager family, much yep, love. Rhiannon's here, and then Drake. Damon. Damon in there. Damon's in there. Much love to you guys. And did I see Sandy? Cindy in there? Yep. Cindy, Cindy and uh, Cindy LJ, and big high fives to Ollie, and big hug to Abby. And um, yeah, thank you guys very, very much. Let us begin. And today is one of these things. Right, let's let's begin in prayer first. Jay gave me the old sign. I need to pray. Um, and before we pray, today is going to be one of these days that we may never read the Targums again. <clears throat> and um, Eli was actually reading ahead of this. And the Targums is one of these, these translations that none of us in this house have ever read. It just came to us about the same time we started reading it with you guys. And we are going to continue and read in it up until something gets funny. Today might be that day. Eli gave us a little hint of some stuff that might be funny. And so as a family, not just uh, the five of us sitting around here, but as all of you guys over here, we're gonna figure this out today. If this is something we want to continue reading in, if it is worth our while, or if it adds any kind of confusion and we will um, ditch it if it is not something we're after. So we want to be very diligent on this. And one thing that we always wanna be extremely diligent on is Deuteronomy 4.2. We do not wanna to add to, and we do not wanna take anything away from the Torah. When we do that, we are in very bad waters and we're doing something that is that pretty much every religion across the world has already done. They always add to it and they always take away the Torah. They will free themselves from the laws. They will, they will do whatever they want to do. <clears throat> and that's what we don't want to do. We want to make sure that we are rightly in the word exactly as it should be. So we will discuss this today. Let's begin in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we come before you as your people. We come before you as people all over this world. Father, this is a tiny ecclesia, and you know we're seeking you, and you know the people that are seeking you. And Father, I ask that you will bless everyone that is listening to this today. Father, I ask that you will soften the hearts and soften the ears, and for the message for this to go out, that people are able to hear this, that people are able to receive your word. Father, we thank you for your son. We thank you for his sacrifice. We thank you for the perfect sacrifice that we have of Messiah Yahushua and that we do have a shot at this kingdom to come, that we do have a shot. But Father, you have given us a path. You have given us a Torah and you will not forget us. Father, I pray that we do not forget you, that we seek your ways in every way and that you will convict those out there who are willing and ready to seek your word and to seek your ways. Father, we thank you for everything. Again, I ask for blessings for everybody that is out there. We thank you. We love you, Father. We ask this in the name of Yahushua. Amen. Okay. Carla just popped in. Carla, Carla, dear sister Carla's in here. Much love to you, dear sis. All right. So let us begin. With the um, Shema. Let us begin with the Shema. Very good, Jade. This is the Shema. Read this with authority. The Shema means what, Eli? Hear and obey. It means hear and obey. And who is, are they talking about hearing and obeying? Us. Us. Who's us? I mean, what, what are we talking about? The children of Yisrael. Who's the children of Yisrael? Who is that? It is now us because we keep his commandments. But if we are the children of Yisrael, who are the people back in the days? Why would we be the people of Yisrael if those were the people of Yisrael? Whoever follows law and commands, it becomes a child of Yisrael. It becomes one of, the, of Yahuwah's people. If you follow us, the law has your command, you fall under the Yahuwah. We fall under this, right. And so simply by attempting, and I'm not going to say simply, because for, for most of the world, people think, think these laws are some sort of complex jujitsu moves. Like there's some sort of complex Rubik's Cube or something that nobody can do, no man is able to do. These are kind of burdens that just hold a man down, but they're not. And so in Deuteronomy 6, we have a, a verse called the Shema. And it is very good. Jaden, if you will read that with authority, please. I would appreciate it slowly and with authority. Right. Hear, O Yashrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah is one. And you shall love Yahuwah Eloheinu with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children. And you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be frontlets at, between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. Beautiful. All right, so thank you very much for that, Jaden. Um, we well, we are, need to go over the commands first. We need to go over the commands. You're right, Eli. Thank you very much. I'm going to pull this thing up right here, see if I can not botch this. Okay. So we're going to do what we do every single week, and we're going to fly through these. And for those who do not know what the laws, statutes, and commands are, and I guess for those who are here, let me, let me tell you a little bit about this, this, this new channel that we're on, because 
Here's, here's what my intent was. After the Hallelujah Grifter Scriptures went crazy and they got our other channel in the ER room, we're, we're technically on the ER room, I thought I would bring us all over here to the Yahoo and the Torah 2 channel where the first channel we had has like 28,000 subs, right? It's really noisy. There's a lot of stuff going on. And so I thought this was a great opportunity to take our little tiny Ecclesia over here and we can kind of have a little bit of quiet, peace and quiet. And so we started off and there's about 125 people out of 28,000 people that keep the law, statutes, and commands. They're interested in this. So we had 120 some people on our channel. I was doing really good. About two or three days ago, a video that we put up three months ago started getting all sorts of subs. And so literally overnight, we're like 100 subs up on this. And so all of a sudden, our little itty bitty tiny channel that we had 120 some people, now we have 300 and some people. And they're not here for the Torah. They're here for the music. And I find that interesting. And I find it real interesting that we try to... Um, tried to take us a little bit into a secluded place and it doesn't appear that Yah wants us in a secluded place and he wants these people to continue on here. So um, I guess that is um, the hand of Yah doing what he is going to do. So for those new people, the 100 new subs that do end up watching this, whenever you guys do end up watching this, what we're about to go over right here are the greatest things you could ever hear in your life. A lot of people like, you know, celebrations. A lot of people like happy birthdays. A lot of people are very happy about certain times, certain things they hear. This is one of these things that is far better than anything you will ever hear. It's better than a new birth. It is better than a new car. It is better than a new house. It is better than something, anything, because these are absolutely free to us. They have been written by the hand of our creator for a time such as this. They will enhance your life. They will, they will create happiness in your family. You will find the right spouse if both of you guys are in Torah. You will find the right way forward if you are in the Torah and you, are, you will have less of a chance to trip and crack your, your head on, a, on the sidewalk, in, on Satan's sidewalk when, you're, when you know this. When we know the laws, statutes, and commands, and when we write these on our hearts, minds, and souls, and somebody comes up to us and wants us to do something evil, right? Immediately, we know these because they are written on our hearts, minds, and souls. But yet you will have an entire sets of religions that are like, well, the Holy Spirit will guide me. The Holy Spirit will, tells me everything that I need to do. And although that may be true, if we do not read what the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator say, we will never get them and we will never get them when we need them in the right time. And so as we go over these, um, Let's start our yawning now. Let's get the yawning out of the way. Anyone yawning here? Okay, good. Any of you out there that are yawning now, let's do this because I know sometimes they get um, monotonous. Sometimes you don't want to hear this or we go over the same stuff all the time. And um, these things are the same things that we should be going over all the time. We should all be fruitful. We all should be multiplying. We should all be replenishing the earth, right? That's just the way our lives should be. And unfortunately, they're not. All right, gentlemen, I just did the first three. Let's go around here and let us tell people the very awesomest things that you could ever have, that you could ever know, that could ever apply to your life. If you are a person without a father or didn't have good parents, you're in luck. You're right here. Your greatest parent that you could ever have has given us a set of guidelines. And he says, hey, if you keep these, you can be in my kingdom. If you don't, it's okay. You can go to the other kingdom but you're not going to like it too much so here we go continue on Command be fruitful multiply and replenish the earth commandment four subdue it have dominion over the fish fowl and every living creature the air burying every tree is for food men and women should build their own families master sin every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you do not eat the blood walk before me and be perfect guard yahoo's laws covenants statutes and commandments 53 times we're told this my friends 53 times, I, I make a point of this every week and I probably should make a point of it every week further that if our father didn't, I mean, if it didn't matter to him, he wouldn't have said it, right? But if he says it 53 times, we should probably take some notes. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. All right, speak up, little cotton, cotton friend. Okay, keep the Passover, Pesach. 
Keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Matzah. There was one Torah for the stranger and the Ebrim. Sanctify all who born to Yahuwah. That was beautiful, Eli. Thank you. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven image. Do not bring Yahuwah's name to not. Keep the Shabbat. Honor your parents, gentlemen. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall restore it five times. Yahuwah's law is for criminals. You shall stone the witches, wizards, and mediums. Do not lie with beasts. No sacrifice to other gods, lowercase g. Do, do not oppress the stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. Jade, if you actually put that little audio thing that you have right there towards this little thing, we can all hear you, but we're at the table. I right, just aim to the point there. Just I want to make sure when I when I hear these over, I'm just talking to you because I listen to this stuff over and it's like I'm really loud and I don't mean to be. And these guys are really soft and they don't mean to be. So we're both uh, have problems there. OK, where are we at? I think 38. All right, let's continue. Uh, 38. Do you not charge your brother interest? Yes, I do. OK, if you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return it to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false report. Do not follow a multitude of evil. Do not judge righteously against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress a stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feasts of Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends before you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Do not make or use this noisy on a normal person. Do not make or use this perfume on a normal person. Okay, the two commandments right there, those are Levitical um, perfuming things, uh, recipes that we do not make. Do not eat the fat. Do what you say you are going to do. Return what is your neighbor's. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Women's time of separation. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippurim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for a wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice your children to Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corners of your field, or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Do not lie or be a liar. Pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not divert your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Don't mix linen and wool. Do not lie with a taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard or the corners of your head. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do not get tattoos. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measures. Do not walk in the manners of the nations. Keep the feast of the first fruits, Shavuot, on our count. Keep the feast of trumpet, Yom Teruah. Keep the feast of Sukkot, Shemini Atzeret. If you blaspheme in the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay who you have trespassed against. The Torah of being a Nazir. Wear Zizi on the four corners of your garments. The laws of whoever touched the corpse. Follow Yahuwah's laws of inheritance. Torah of keeping your oath to Yahuwah. But in the land, the laws of murder and victims' families. Do not add or take away from the word. Hear, 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 hear. I will second that and third it. Guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Bind the laws upon your hand and the front between your eyes. Write the laws on your doorposts. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. And um, what was the verse Zach says today? Wasn't it something like, don't be afraid of your enemies or something that, that he said? It I was the Psalms one, yeah. It was Psalms. It was something kind of like that. Okay, let's continue on. We'll go over that one here later. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave to Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Destroy graven images. Do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pagans do to their Elohim. Rejoice in all Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not do what is right in your own eyes. Do not hearken to the words of false prophets. Kill the false prophets. Do not listen and kill those that try to turn you away from Yahuwah, even if they are your family members. And that is for the land, for those who are new to this. If you guys see an asterisk right next to this, 
Um, this means you probably shouldn't go into your local town and blow everybody away, right? That's not what this means, right? This is if in the land, when it is a holy covenanted land that everybody is following the laws, statutes, and commands, you end up with the, I don't know, some Jehovah's Witnesses at your doorsteps, that would be the time. But I'm not saying to kill the Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm just saying that in the land of Yisrael, when we have that, when people try to turn you away, that is how important this is to our creator, that when people come and try to sway you, that you get the rocks. Okay, let's continue on, gentlemen. If a city has turned away from Yahuwah, burn the city and kill all inhabitants. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give to a stranger of clean food that dies of itself, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithe of your increase of seed year by year. Laws of the end of the seven-year release. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your heart nor shut your hand from the poor. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Three times a year all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. Do not plant Ashroth poles near the altar. Any man or woman that has done wicked things in your gates shall be taken out and stoned. There must be two or three witnesses. Hearken to the prophet Yahuwah has chosen. There's a test of the prophets. Do not remove your neighbor's property line. How to deal with a false witness among Torah keepers. The first child is to get double portions. You want to read that again, Eli? No. Okay. <laughs> all right, fine. The law of the wayward son. If a man is hung to death, he shall not remain all night. If your brother's cattle or clothes are lost and you find them, you must return them. A woman should not wear what pertains to a man, nor a man wear what pertains to a woman. Don't be a girly man. If, if, you, if you find a bird's nest with a mother and the babies or eggs, take the babies, but not the mother. If you build a ha new house with a flat roof that has ill you lived on, you must put a railing around it. Laws of the accuser and accused and purity of relationships. If a man has a relationship with an engaged woman, both should be killed. If an engaged woman is raped, she is not charged with a crime, but the man shall die. If a man force himself upon an undefiled woman, he must pay the father and take her to be his wife. And not divorce her, is the last part of that command. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. You may eat from your neighbor's vineyard or grain, but you may not take it out of the field. Newly married man should stay home for one year to be with his wife. You missed uh, one above that. The, oh, law, 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 the law of divorce. You don't like law of divorce, Kate? I missed it. Okay. All right, yeah, law of divorce. There is a law of divorce. Um, if anyone's concerned or wants to read it, it's in the other one. Okay, continue on. All right, this is 64B. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. If a man is found kidnapping, he shall die. If you lend to your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset, if that was his pledge. Do not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Do not go back for the forgotten sheep in the field, leave for the stranger, fatherless, and widow. You cannot give a man more than forty stripes for his judgment of his wickedness. Do not muzzle your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has no child, you shall take his wife and name the firstborn after your brother. If a woman comes to defend her man and grabs the other man's privates, you shall cut off her hand. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah at the Feast of Sukkot. All right. Well, that was awesome. Um, hopefully that has enhanced your life. Hopefully that is something that we are um, having to where you have dreams about this. Hopefully at some point you wake up and you're wondering what commandment 131 was, which I don't know what it is. I just threw a number out there. But hopefully this is something that will intrigue you guys and something that other people can use and that they will um, use to guide their lives because every single one of these commands is something very, very good. There is nothing in here that is too hard to, to take. There's no slavery in this. There is nothing that is um, that is going to hurt you. But yet uh, we have the entire world that wants to be free from these, and which is crazy because if we are free from them, then, yeah, I guess we can toss people off our rooftops and, uh, you know, defraud people and do whatever it is that um, evil people do because that is what people without the Torah are is they are inherently evil. All right. So let us get into this. And this again, where are we at Eli? Up here on this. This may be our very last um, um, reading out of the targets. And like I, I do want to explain to everybody out there, our, I guess our mission, our job or whatever it we want to call this is number one is not to confuse people. And so if there's any kind of confusion in any of this stuff, this is what we will get to the bottom for, of first. And so as we're listing up, I would like to ask everybody out there in the chat room, if you guys will kind of 
listen very closely to this, especially those of you who are very astute in the Torah and who know the Torah very well. And as we read this, let's get to what the, what, what does the, the Ruha HaKadosh tell you guys? What is our feeling on this? And do, after today's reading, do we want to continue in the Targums or have we heard enough? So let's begin and you guys will kind of see what we're talking about. We will discuss this as we see it. It's going to be a very interesting discussion today. Okay, so here we are. This is in Genesis 13. Is everyone ready? Yep. All right, here we go. And Abram went up from Mitzrayim into the Negev, he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot with him. And Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold. And he went on his journey from the Negev as far as Bet El to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bet El and Ai, to the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And there Abram called on the name of Yahuwah. Now Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them, and they might dwell together, that they might dwell together, for their possessions were great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abraham's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. And at that time, the Canaanites and the Perizzites dwelt in the land. We you need know, to go up top? Uh, I to, you can go whenever, really. Yeah. Okay, so let's just go to the top, and we will begin with our Targums. And this is, again, for those who do not know what this is, this is a, another translation that is very, very close to our scriptures that we know, but has some other stuff in it. And so we're, we're trying to decipher, is this scripture or is this not? So let's be very astute as we do this. And Abram went up from Mizraim, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot with him, to the south. And Abram became very strong in cattle, in silver, and in gold. And he proceeded in his journeys from the south unto Bethel and returned to the place where he had outspread his tabernacle at the first between Bethel and Ai to the place of the altar, which he had made there at the beginning. And Abram prayed there in the name of Yahuwah and also unto Lot, who was remembered through the righteousness of Abram. There were sheep and oxen and tents and the land could not sustain them to dwell together because their possessions were great and they were not able to dwell together. And contentions arose between the shepherds of Abram's flock and the shepherds of the flocks of Lot. For the shepherds of Abram had been instructed by him not to go among the Kenani and the, Fer the Pharisee, who as yet had power in the land, and to restrain the cattle that they should make no depredation in going to the place of their pasture. But the shepherds of Lot would go and feed in the grounds of the Kenani and the Pharisee, who yet dwelt in the land. You the Jerusalem? Okay, the Jerusalem post says that, or the Jerusalem part of this says this. Their treasures, okay, and so this, everything from the top right here to the bottom is yet another translation. So um, I guess if anything, we're, we're trying to cut the meat out of this for sure. Okay, their treasures and their strife between the shepherds of Abram's cattle and the shepherds of the cattle of Lot, the shepherds of Abram restrained their beasts until the time of their coming to the place of their pasture. But the shepherds of Lot did not restrain their beasts but turned them free and went. But Abram's shepherds had been instructed by Abram, their righteous master, go not to the Kenani or the Pharisee, for as yet they have possession in the land. Okay, okay. so here we go. Um, where are we at, eight? Gentlemen? Yeah. You guys with me? Yep, we're on eight. Okay. Then Abram said to Lot, please let there be no strife between you and me and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brothers. Is not all the land before you? Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I go to the left. And Lot filled, lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of the Yardin, that it was well watered everywhere before Yahuwah destroyed Sodom and Amorah, like the garden of Yahuwah, like the land of Mitzram as you go toward Zohar. Okay, so did you guys say the garden of Yahuwah? Of course yours yeah. does. So what is the garden of Yahuwah? I mean the garden of Eden, I would assume. Yeah, and it was well watered everywhere before Yahuwah destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the Garden of Yahuwah. So, so the Garden of Eden, I guess we could say, is well watered. I mean, Actually, there's a lot of like, a little streams flowing through it. Streams. I don't know. I wonder if it needed to be watered like the rest of our stuff, or it just grew awesomely. Okay, eleven. So Lot chose for himself all the plain of the Yardim, and Lot moved east. Thus they separated from each other. Abram dwelling in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelling in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent as far as Sodom. Okay, do we need to get to the next one? Uh, I was going to have you read till 14. Okay. But the men of Saddam were evil and sinned before Yahuwah exceedingly so. And after Lot had separated from him, Yahuwah said to Abram, 
Now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which you see, I shall give to you and your seed forever. Okay, now we're heading back up to the Targums and we're going to uh, see what they say here. And Abram said a lot, between me and thee, let there, not, let there not now be controversy, nor between my shepherds and thy shepherds, for we are brother men. Is not all the land before thee? Separate then from me, if thou go to the north, I to the south. If thou to the south, I to the north. And Lot uplifted his eyes towards the place of fornication and beheld all the plain of Jardina that was, it was altogether well watered. Before Yahuwah in his wrath had destroyed Sodom and Amorah, a land admirable for trees as the garden of Yahuwah and for fruitage as the land of Mizraim as thou goest up to Zor. And Lot chose to him all the plain of Jardina and Lot journeyed from the east and they separated the one man from his brother. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the towns of the plain, and spread his tabernacle towards Saddam. And the men of Saddam were depraved in their wealth. Do we, hold on. Uh, this isn't in the regular. This is, okay, so this is a little extra stuff. And before we get into this, guys, real quickly, give me a few things that you guys have had that we have learned in the Targums that we did not, that we do not know. Let's go over a quick list. One that I can tell you is that the skins of Adam and Eve were of snake skin, right? When he clothed them, they were in snake skin. What else are there things that we have learned from the Targums that we did not know? We knew that uh, the aim, the messengers rounded up all the animals to Noah. He the messengers, the ones that brought them all to Noah. Yep. Also, did it did it say in the regular? Um, it said, I think, in the Targums that there was a uh, a lion that fought her kids. Was that in the regular scriptures? That's in Jasher. Oh, that was in Jasher. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm dang it, dang it. Um, okay, so that that isn't there. Excuse me, guys. I guess that's in Jasher, but that was interesting. I guess that what I was actually talking about is that um, when they were when Noah was uh, getting on the ark and all the angels had brought all of the animals up there, there were there was a mother like a, a like a lion or something and her whelps and the whelps started attacking the mother because there were only certain animals that could go on it. And so it was really weird how everything went. But um, Noah saw that and he was really confused as to, you know, why the kids attacked his mother and things of that nature. But Yah was separating the animals and it was just a, just a crazy encounter. Okay, anything else that we know of? About the bones, how many bones there were. Oh, bones, right. In the body. Right. So, so far, do we have anything that would concern us in the Targums? No. No. Anything at all? No. Okay, let's continue on. Where are we at? Just uh, see, we're up here. We are. Okay, so back up to the targums at the top, guys. Abram dwelt. Let's see, where am I at here? Yeah, right there. And yeah, yeah, you're right there. Right there. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the towns of the plain and spread his tabernacle towards Saddam. And the men of Saddam were depraved in their wealth, one with another. And they sinned in their bodies. They sinned with open nakedness and the shedding of innocent blood and practiced strange worship and repelled greatly against the name of Yahuwah. Now, we know all this, right? Mm -hmm. Right? So we knew that they were a bunch of uh, really crazy... Immoral people. Immoral people. Yeah, absolutely immoral. Okay. Just a little more. And Yahuwah said to Abram, After that lot had separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art to the north and to the south, to the east and to the west. For all the land that thou seest will I give unto thee and to thy sons forever. Okay, so here we are. We're on 16. 16. 16. Verse 16 in the uh, Yahuwah's scriptures at the bottom. And I shall make your seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could count the dust of the earth, then your seed also could be counted. So that's a lot of, that's a lot of people, right? I mean, how, you know, what is the dust of the earth? Is, is, this, is this true? Did Yah make... This generation is dust of the earth? Uh, the world as it is, I would say, that the dust of the earth. We could all be sons of Abraham. I mean, you could, you could take a handful of dust, and there could be millions and millions and millions of particles in one little handful. Um, this just says, basically, that um, he's spread out, that he has a tremendous amount of descendants. And, yeah, he, he couldn't really count it. And you can't count a handful of dust. There's no way to count that. You could probably weigh it, but you're not going to be able to count it. Okay, 17. Arise, I walk, arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. So Abram moved his tent and went and dwelt by terabith trees of Mamre, which are in Kebron, and built an, an, an altar there to Yahuwah. I found a mistake. 
Okay, I found a mistake um, on your thing. Okay. So at the very bottom of this, it says built and alter. So it should be built and alter. Um, okay. All right. So what do we have? Let's go back up to the top here. Sorry, guys. We're doing a little bit of proofreading as well on this as we go through it. And I will make thy sons manifold as the dust of the earth, as that, as it is impossible for a man to number the dust of the earth. So also shall it, also it shall be impossible to number thy sons. Arise, journey in the land and make occupation of it in length and breadth. For to thee will I give it. And Abram stretched his tent and made folds for oxen and sheep. And he came and dwelt in the vale of the Mamre, which is in Hebron, and builded there an altar before Yahuwah. Okay, um, anything else that we got from this, this that we do not have in other stuff? No, that's um, pretty much all very similar, very close to the same. Okay, all right, so we are going to go to the next one, and this is where things might get a little odd. Um, and this is where we all, as a group and a kind of a family here, we want to see if we want to continue on with the Targums in the, in the future to come. Anything going on in the chat room? No, Everyone's quiet. quiet. Everyone's quiet. The worldwide widows. He's hey, here. worldwide widows here. All right. Um, but that's it. But everybody's pretty quiet. Okay, everyone's real quiet. Sylvia said she had a dream. Uh -oh. A very big Torah book, and she read it in the original language. Wow, that'd be cool. That'd be awesome. Okay, so let's go to the fourteen guys. Let's get into this and see what we get. And it came to be in the days of Amraphel, sovereign of Shinar, Arioch, sovereign Eliasar, Kedaloma, sovereign of Eliam, and Tidal, sovereign of Goyim. That they fought against Bera, sovereign of Saddam, Bersha, sovereign of Amora, Shinab, sovereign of Adma, Shema Ibar, sovereign of Zeboim, and the sovereign of Bela, that is Zoar. All these joined together in the valley of Siddim, that is the Salt Sea. Twelve years they served Kedor Omer, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. And in the 14th year, Ked or La Omer. Does anyone try, or try to do this? What did you guys say? How do you guys say it? Ked or La Omer. What's with the D? You guys remember what the D is? Oh, I got it. Okay, let's try to get this down. Um, Ked or La Omer. The D is, it's like a T-H. T-H, so it'd be Keth, Keth or La Omer. Keth a La Omer. Keth this is going to be Omer. tough. Okay, and the sovereigns that were with him came and smote the Rephraim and the Ashtaroth, Karen Aim, and the Zuzim Kam, and the Emites in the Shawala Kirathium. I'm just getting owned here. I'm getting. It was a hard one. Yeah, it is. And the Korites in their mountain of Sierra, as far as El Peron, which is by the wilderness. Okay, so let's go up to the uh, Targums and see if this is a little easier to read. Not really. No. And it was in the days of Amraphel. He is Nimrod. Okay, hold on. Whoa, wait a second. This is the very first thing. Did this say he's Nimrod? Well, it makes sense because it's the sovereign of Shinar. Yeah. And it came to be in the days of Amraphrael, sovereign of Shinar. Okay, so Amraphrael. So why didn't they say it's Nimrod? It's all a different language. Yeah, it's a names. different language. So when they, they, so this would have to be after the Babel, right? And so he is now, instead of him being Nimrod, and so for those who do not understand what my confusion is here, or what we're seeing here, it doesn't say that Amraphiel is Nimrod. But when the 70 angels came down and confused the lands of Babel, there were 70 languages that were put in. And prior to that, it was all, everybody spoke ancient Hebrew. And so when everything was changed up, this one guy whose name was Nimrod, however that is in he, ancient Hebrew, everybody, names do not translate right they they don't they don't translate right and so whatever language it went into he became the king of whatever amraphael so that is actually king nimrod so that's very interesting okay you were on seven down seven here. down here and let me get this up okay he is nimrod who commanded abram to be cast into the furnace he was then king of pontos arioch so called because he was eric tall among the giants king of thalassar kedar la omer so-called, because he had bound himself or gone over among the bondsmen of the king of Elam, and Thidel, crafty as a fox, king of the people, subjected to him, made war with Bera, whose deeds were evil, king of Saddam, and with Bersha, whose deeds were wicked, king of Amora, Shinab, who had hated his father, king of Adma, and Shimabar, who had corrupted himself with fornication, king of Zeboim, 
and the kings of the city which consumed Bela, the dwellers thereof, which is Zoar. All these were joined in the vale of the gardens, Paradisia, the place that produced the streamlets of water that emptied themselves into the sea of salt. Twelve years they had served Kedar, Kedar Lo Le Omer, and in the thirteenth year they had rebelled. And in the fourteenth year came Kedar Lo Omer and the kings who were with him and smote the giants Giborah, Giboriah, which were in the Ashtaroth Kernium, and the strong who were in Hamedetha, and the terrible who were in the plain of Kirathium, and the Kore dwellers in caverns who were in the high mountains of Begela unto the valley of Pharaoh, which was nigh upon the edge of the desert. Okay, wow. So that has a whole bunch of stuff that we don't have anywhere, any of this stuff. Why don't we have any of this stuff in here? Uh, yeah, the Jerusalem and that's it. Yeah, the Jerusalem part on this. Okay. All these were joined in the valley of the gardens, and they slew the giants who were in the Asheroth Kernam, the famed who were among them, and the formidable who inhabited the city which they had built, and the cavern people who dwelt in the mountain of Gebela, Gebala, unto the valley of Vishen, which is nigh upon the desert. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. So... Um, what what do you guys make of this? Is anyone paying attention here? Yeah, guys, so far, what, what's going on? So far, that uh, it seems fine. We just get more extra names. We get to find out who people actually are. And it tells us their sins. It tells us like why they're so wicked. Yeah, there's a lot of other stuff. The, the question, I guess, the question I would always have is how did this stuff get exited out of the King James version that we ended up with? How, how is there all of these other? information in this that somehow we do not have. I think if uh, Hasatan is wanting to leave us in more confusion, he wins, right? If we're, we have more questions and answers reading this book and it questions our faith, then he wins. Yeah, if it questions our faith, and that's what we absolutely have to do. That's where we have to see is, if, if, is this going against Torah in any way, shape, or form. Okay, let's continue on. Verse 7. And they turned back and came to Ayin Mishpat, that is Kadesh, and smote all the country of the Amalekites and also the Amorites who dwelt in Katseton Tamar. And the sovereign of Saddam and the sovereign of Amora and the sovereign of Adma and the sovereign of Zeboim and the sovereign of Bela, that is Zohar, went out and joined together in battle in the Valley of Siddim against Kedah Lo Omer, sovereign of Eliam and Tidal, sovereign of Goyim and Amraphel, sovereign of Shinar and Ariok, sovereign of Elisar, Four sovereigns against five. Okay, what are we dealing with here? Uh, it's like a whole bunch of kingdoms teamed up and they're all going to war. Everybody's going to battle. Yeah, everybody's going into battle. Okay, ten. And the valley of Siddim had many tar pits. And the sovereigns of Siddim and Amora fled and fell there. And the remainder fled to the mountains. Okay, so we, we're heading back up to the Targums at the top. And they returned and came to the place where they rendered the judgment of Moshe the prophet. To the fountain of waters of strife, which is Rechim. And they smote all the fields of Amalaki, and also the Emery, who dwelt in En Gedi, and the king of Saddam, and the king of Morah, and the king of Adma, and the king of Zeboim, and the king of, of the city, which consumed its inhabitants, which is Zoar, went forth, and set the array of battle against them in the valley of the gardens, with Kedar, Kedar Le Omer, king of Elam, and Thiddle, king of the nations, obedient to him, and Amraphel, king of Pontos, and Arioch, King of Thes Thel Asar, four kings reigned in battle against five. Now, guys, what are we dealing with here? How did how did we just end up with a flood and all of the giants were destroyed, and now all of these kings are fighting against so-called people? What's happening here? Uh, is it, how did the generation of Ham or something? Like that? Is it the generation of Ham? I think Nimrod was a giant. Because Nimrod was a giant. Definitely, Nimrod was a giant. Um, and so, what are we, because? No, is Noah still alive in these days? I don't think. I, think, I know. I, think, I believe he passed, but Shem's still. I think yeah, Shem's still around. Shem's still around for a little bit, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is very interesting. Let's continue on. This is now in the Jerusalem side of this translation. And Ab Amraphel, king of Pontos, and Ariok, king of Elessar, four kings against five, spread out the array of war. And the valley of the gardens had many pits filled with bitumen. And then in the other version says the valley of the gardens was full of pits of bitumen. And the kings of Saddam and Amora fled away and fell there, and they who were left to the mountains, and they took... No, and left. Oh, uh, left. Okay, left, left fled to the mountains. Okay. So now we are down 
You are on 11. 11. Okay. So now we're heading back to Yahoo Scriptures at the bottom. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Amorah and all their food and went away. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom with his goods and left. Right, you're okay. going to want to stop there because there's way more right here. Okay. So we're going back up to the Targums at the top. And they took all the property of Sodom and Amorah and all their food and went. And they made captive Lot, the son of Abram's brother, and his property and went. And he had dwelt in Sodom. And Og came, who had been spared from the giants that died in the deluge, and had ridden protected upon the top of the ark, and sustained with food by Noah, not being spared through his right through high righteousness, but that the inhabitants of the world might see the power of Yahuwah and say, Were there not giants who in the first times rebelled against Yahuwah of the world and perished from the earth? But when these kings made war, behold, Og, who was with them, said in his heart, I will go and show Abram concerning Lot, who is led captive, that he may come and deliver him from the hands of the kings into whose hands have been delivered. And he arose and came upon the eve of the day of the Pascha and found him making the unleavened cakes. Then showed he to Abram the Hebrew who dwelt in the valleys of Mamre and Morah, brother of Eshcol and brother of Anar, who were men of covenant with Abram. And when Abram heard that his brother was made captive, he armed his young men who were trained for war, grow up into his house, but they, were, they willed not to go with him. And he chose from them Eleazar, the son of Nimrod, who was equal in strength to all the 318, and he pursued unto Dan. Okay, we got to stop here and we got to, uh, we got to figure this one out. Okay, this is a lot happening there. Yeah, what is really going on they here? They said this dude named Og rode upon the top of the ark, was fed snacks by Abraham, no. or by, by Noah, and lived basically through the flood. Okay. And, For, then, and then we have Nimrod's son, Elzar. Okay, there's two things that we have never ever heard before. And I, I when I first heard this, I was like, that's 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 not right. That's 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 not real. That can't be baloney. That's baloney. Okay, let's talk about this first. First and foremost, what do we know about the king of Og? He was thirteen. He He's had giant. a thirteen foot bed, right? Yeah, he was huge. He's absolutely huge. And Moses killed him. Moses killed him, right? And Moses is four hundred years after Abraham, but he or way after Abraham. But see, he they weren't living to one hundred twenty years till after the flood, and he could have lived six, seven hundred years. Okay, what? Why would Yah ever put a giant on top of the ark and save him? Number one, who is going to be able to sit on top of a boat? For 40 days in a massive flood. Okay, so but, I don't think he's tied guys at the top. I think he must have been under a little roof or something or something on top. He was the top of the ark, but he wasn't in the ark. Number one, what, is this even real? Would y'all spare a giant? Would y'all spare a giant? Could you live on top of a boat or wherever it is 40 days in a flood? I don't think so. I don't think you're going to be, I don't care if you're a giant. I don't care if you're like a Superman or something. If you're tied to the top of a boat in a storm for 40 days, I don't think you're going to make it out of this. I don't think man can do this. I mean, we got Brother Glenn in here who is a he soldier. Says per protected upon the top of the ark. Protected upon the top of the ark. So well, he has a little apartment up top or something? Why does this feel weird? Anyone in the chat room does nobody I've never heard this before. I this is where we are conflicted with this reading, and I don't want to toss this out if this could be true. Why have we never heard of this before? Why how could this be? And if he was Abraham's friend, why are we killing him way Why didn't Moses wipe him out? They, maybe he went bad later. Maybe there's another og. I don't know. Also, I was wondering, could there maybe be another it could og? Have been like his descendant. It could be a descendant, but why would Yod? Why would he keep one giant alive? That doesn't make. Does, does this make any sense to anybody out there? Not unless this was a righteous giant, right? Unless we've never heard of any giants that are righteous. They all got wiped out, and they were all evil. And the first thing we ever heard. This is the first time we ever heard that Eleazar was the son of Nimrod. I think we know in Jasher that he, uh, Nimrod gave him a servant. He, Eleazar, right, he gave but him. But never noted he was his son. Why would he? Why would Nimrod give him his son? That makes zero sense to me at all. He probably has a uh, better chance of better life than Abraham. Glenn says he's never heard of it either, so he's going to do some research on it. Yeah, and and so I I don't know what to make of this. I mean, I don't know right now if we should take this and. And Tess is right. We need two witnesses. Yeah. To, to, and, this does, and this is where we don't want confusion with anybody out there. I mean, I, I, honestly, I, I don't, I don't, I can't imagine this would be, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's not like kind of you, story, but. The part of Elazar being Nimrod's son is way more believable than a giant living with Noah on the ark and then 
making it off and now he's just living his life. All right. Why? Okay. So Nimrod, get, when, when Eleazar went with Nimrod, it was right after Nimrod, N Nimrod tossed Abraham, in the, Abraham in the fire. And he was in there, I think, for three days. And it did not... Basically, after three days, when all the people trying to get him out burned up and they all got in, they all ended up dead, then he gave him a bunch of stuff, including he said his servant, Eleazar. Why? What? What person in their right mind would ever give their kid to a foreigner like this, especially a kid? That doesn't make I mean, any sense. Maybe he saw how powerful he was, so maybe he thought Eleazar would be blessed if he was under his reign or something. Instead of Nimrod's reign, because I mean, Nimrod's the guy who's throwing kids to the ground. Yeah, but their here's the gig: is Eleazar went against Nimrod. He went against his dad at the end, right? Yeah. He, he, I mean, if if it is really the truth, Eleazar turned on his dad and he went with Abram and several times. Eleazar was Abram's right hand man. That was the man. That was who's supposed to get Apparently the. Apparently, he's a giant now too. But that can't be. See, that cannot be. That would all be. If he was Nimrod's offspring, see, this is what I don't buy. If it was Nimrod's offspring, that's giant DNA. That is corrupted DNA. Yah would never allow any kind of offspring, right? So, and remember, Abram thought the, the, his offspring was going to come El through Eliezer. He's like, no, you're going to have your own kid. Yeah. So, um, these are the first two things in this Targums that I don't, I don't, I don't believe. I mean, I don't, I don't see anything. But I let's, I guess, before we we toss the baby out with the bathwater. Let's see. Maybe Brother Glenn can find something on this, and we can d discuss this maybe this dude further. Up there surfing on the ark for forty days. Yeah, what, what's this guy? Was he behind the ark with some skis, and they were going behind they're pushing it? Pushing the boat with a paddle or something. Even protected up on top of this, we know that the ark was sealed. Right when when Noah went in the ark, it was sealed. When he opened it at the end, I think Noah popped the top or something, or he was able to pop something off himself. But it was a window. It was a window. But right? this, this dude, like, uh, the only way this dude could have been in it is he had his own little apartment and mostly of, like, handing food through no, there. Like, not Moses. It wasn't Moses. No. Um, I yeah, keep saying, getting, I keep saying Moses because all was with Moses and he was right. the one that killed him. Yeah, so I don't know so much about this. So I, I guess if, if nobody else has uh, the best shot we have is Brother Glenn. He is our wise old owl. Um, he might be able to find something on this and see what it is. But, um, guys, just so you, those who are listening to this, Number one is if it goes against laws, statutes, and commands, all of a sudden it's an it's a it's a thing. This does not go against laws, statutes, and commands. This gives us more things to think about, right? Definitely things to think about. And um, like if something in there, like we were reading this and it said, "Go ahead and drink the blood," and it goes against the Torah, then we would ditch the targums immediately, right? There, that that would be it. That would be the end of it. So these are very interesting questions, and I'm very super glad that we have all you guys out there we can we can discuss this with, because I, I don't know. Tess says she's going to do more research, too. To thank you. Thank you, dear sis. Is. Yes. Okay, so let's continue uh, on. You're in the Jerusalem. Okay, so here. we're back to the Jerusalem post at the top, and let's see what else it says. Domestics, mar <laughs> marbitsi, downliers. I don't even know what the, I don't even know what I just read. Of his house, 18 and 300. Okay. And pursued after them unto Dan of Kisaria. Okay, so that's saying that's how strong uh, Eleazar is, stronger than all those guys. So then, then that would make sense. Well, the thing was about Nimrod. Nimrod became strong because he got the clothes of Adam, Adam and Eve. Eve, and that it, it basically says that something changed within him when he was when he was doing this. So um, that it was would, one question that Tess had: was Was Nimrod always evil, or did he become evil? No, I don't think Nimrod was always evil. When we read in uh, was it Jasher Jubilees? Uh, it's, it's probably both of them. Um, when you read about it, there was a time when, when King Nimrod was following Yah, when he was not totally against like all of this. power corrupted him. Yeah, abs the power of Nimrod absolutely corrupted him, and he became a hunter of men and a hunter of Yah. And so I don't think he was always evil. And so that, that is a very interesting um, thing that the test just said, is that, you know, if he wasn't always evil, he could very much have a good son. Um, I, I don't know. It would be interesting. All right, so let's continue on. Where are we at? You like? Uh, up here. Okay, and then we're at the top, guys. Yeah. And he divided them at night in the way. A part were, in, were to engage with the kings, and a part were hidden to smite the firstborn of Egypt. Wait a second. What, are we, what did you just say? I don't even know. What did we just read? So we're talking, we're <laughs> It's like, I think what I just heard is they went off to go save Lot, but they just had to go put e around Egypt in this as well. They okay, like, hold, hold so on. The kings of Mitzrayim, though, were, were, were on this, right? All those uh, kings. Look, I don't think there was a single king of Egypt on this. Man, we're causing so much confusion, guys. I'm so sorry. Okay, let's, let's, try, let's just try to read through this, and we'll, we'll try to go. And he divided them at night in the way. A part were to engage with the kings, and a part were hidden to smite the firstborn of Egypt. And he arose, he and his servants, and smote them. 
and pursued them which remained of them unto the place of the memorial of sin, which was to be in Dan from the north of Darmesk. Okay, and so we're, we're just adding a lot of confusion here. Let's, let's go on to the next thing that Jerusalem says. And he pursued them unto Havatha, which is from the north of Darmesk. And I guess that was that. Uh, I probably go back down to here. All right, so we're going to go back to the Yah scriptures. 13. 13. All right. And one who had escaped came and informed Abram, the Ebron, for he dwelt by the terabith trees of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshcol and brother of Anar, and they had a covenant with Abram. So the one who escaped would have been Og. And the one who escaped would have been Og? Yeah, because the one who escaped informed Abr Abram that the brother of Eshcol and the brother of Anar. Right. Okay, so maybe there is something to this. And the one who escaped came and informed Abram. So Og... Og would have somehow uh, escaped. Uh, he would've, why would why would Og? Oh, because he was a because he had to go and inform Abraham or Abram where Lot was. Maybe that is right. Maybe it's a different Og though. Maybe we're dealing with some other gods or something. Okay, so I'm, it's coming together. Maybe. Okay, fourteen. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his three hundred and eighteen trained servants who were born in his own house and went into pursuit in pursuit as far as Dan. Now, didn't they say above in the Targums that? Uh, Eliezer was as strong as... He was as strong as all of them. So 318 he, trained servants? Yeah. Why would they say 318 and the guy actually had 318 servants? Because he's strong. Because he, 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 I think, could beat them all in a fight together. I don't know if they, like, trained together or something. I don't know. Huh. It would make sense that Eliezer, when he, remember when he went and chucked the rock at the yep. judge and made him bleed, that nobody was able to do anything to him? You, There's probably something about this dude... Um, I have some giant power. Yeah, and for those who do not understand what we're just talking about, um, anyone want to explain the quick story on Eliezer chucking the rock at the uh, judge? Yeah, in Sodom, he ended up making a trip there for whatever reason. I think he did visit a lot. Eliezer was there, and this dude hit him in the head with a rock, and they're so, so twisted. He's like, I just did a good deed. I just got blood from your head. You should be thanking me. You should pay me. Because I'm not paying you. You should be in the head of the rock, dude. What is, what's wrong with you? So he took him before a judge, and Eliezer wasn't having any of this, so Eliezer picked up and, a rock and threw it at the judge's head. Well, you missed the story. So he goes to the judge, and the judge goes, yes, this is how it is in our, our land. If we have freed you from the blood in your head, then you owe this guy the money. So Eleazar picked up a rock, chucked it at the judge and says, and told the judge, why don't you just go pay my bill, right? So the guy's bleeding. And so um, that was just one of those really interesting stories. All right. Um, uh, uh, 15. 15. And he and his servants divided against them by night and smote them and pursued them as far as Koba, which is on the left of Damascus. So he brought back all the goods and also brought back his brother Lot and his goods, as well as the women and the people. And after his return from the defeat of Keda, Kedor La Omer and the sovereigns who were with him, the sovereign of Saddam came out to meet him at the valley of Shawet, that is Sovereign's Valley. And Melchizedek, sovereign of Shalom, brought out bread and wine. Now he was the Kohen of the Most High El. Okay, now I want to put a, a stop on this because this is one of the first parts that we hear about a Melchizedek priest. And this is very important because our Messiah, Yahushua, became our Melchizedek priest. He became that perfect priest, and he is our new high Kohen, right? He's our new high priest, as well as the sacrifice. But this was the first time that we heard of anything like this, a, a sovereign. So what do we make of this guy right here? That he's a Melchizedek, right? And um, he brought out bread and wine, and he was the Kohen of the Most High. And then let's continue on, then you guys can discuss it. Right, read till 20, and then we'll go Okay. Up. And he Barak him and said, Barak, Barak be Abram of the Most High El, possessor of the Shemaim and earth. And Barak be the most high El who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tenth of all. Okay, hold on real quick. The tenth of all. I want us to talk about this because I have seen Christian uh, preachers and they will actually use this verse right here and they will like, this is where you owe 10% to us right here because um, you, what, what exactly happened here, guys? So he went and freed a whole bunch of people, and uh, Melchizedek priest showed up to Abraham, and he gave him 10% of all the stuff. Yeah, but why? Who is this guy? Because this guy I, is like the high priest. They were back in the day when there were no priests. This is like the priest of Yahuwah. It'll say in the Targum. Okay, it'll say in the Targums? Yep. Oh, okay. Well, great. I guess we're sitting here uh, asking about this, and are we ready to go to Targums? Yep. Okay, let's, do it. let's answer our own question. Thanks, Eli. He's the only one who's read this. So, And he brought back all the substance. And also Lot, his brother, and his substance he brought back, and also the women and the people. And the king of Saddam came forth, 
After that, he returned from destroying Kedar La Omer and the kings who were with him to meet him at the plain of Meth Meth Anna, which was the king's race course. All right, hold on. <laughs> Wait a second. He might, mean, he, might, he might race the horses. He might race chariots. Maybe oh, he race could, chariots yeah. or something. I don't yeah, know. That'd be cool. What do you mean the king's race horse? Okay, race horse. Okay, in the Jerusalem it says, And the kings who were with him at the plain of vision, which was the house of the king's plain. Okay, we got it. Okay, and then the next one says, And Malka Zedika. Wow, is that the guy's name instead of Melky Zedek? Yep. So this guy's name is instead of in, in well, Melky Melk Zedek. I think that's what he was called there. And Malka Zadika, who was with who was Shim Bar Noah, the king of Jerusalem, came forth to meet Abram and brought forth to him bread and wine. And in that time, he ministered before Eloha Elah. That's, that's, that's Shem. That's Shem. Shem, Shem, Shem Bar Noah means Shem, son of son Noah. Of Noah. So this Zel- Melky Zedek priest, was this Shem? I believe so. I believe there's somewhere talking about either in Jubilees or Jasher. Somewhere it talks about him being the Melky Zedek priest. Why didn't we know this? And what, what, why is it called Malka Zadika? Malka. It, it might be it a must title. Be different because it's where this was in Aramaic. Oh, Mel- right. It was Melchizedek. in Melchizedek, right. It might be Aramaic Melchizedek. So all this time in verse 18... This was Shim. Yep. Yeah. Are we sure of this? I think it would be. I think he'd be because I mean that he, would make sense. I mean, where where did this guy come from? Who is a hyper? Shim would make the right. He'd be a perfect choice for this, right? Yeah, he was the he was the perfect son of Noah, and then he knew the Torah. And we never well. knew this before. We never knew Shim was the Melchizedek priest. And he's also the king of Jerusalem. Well, he, and I, he, well, he was. I think all these guys were kings for a little while. Even uh, Moshe was a king for a while. I yeah. Think. All right. So, well, this is something interesting. All right. Uh, in the Jerusalem. I keep wanting to throw the, the Targums away, but I'm, I don't think so. I, we'll have to see it. Maybe when we think, find King of Og, like, doing the rodeo on top of the, the ark, then we pro can surfing. figure this out. Yeah, pro-surfing out the back. 40-day exhibition. Okay. And Melchizedek, King of Jerusalem, who was Shem, who was the great priest of the Most High, and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of Yahuwah Elohim, Most High, who for the righteous possesseth the heavens and the earth, and blessed be Elah, Elaha, Ela, who hath made thine enemies as a shield which received the blow, and he gave to him one of ten of all which he had brought back. Okay. Wow. I'm just blown away by this whole thing. I did not know this. I've never known this. It makes sense though that he like that's what he did after the flood. He became a priest of Yahweh. And that's the per- that would be the perfect the perfect one is is the son of Noah. And that fulfills Noah's blessing to Shem. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, that's crazy. All right. Uh, 21. All right, 21. So we're going back to Yah's scriptures at the bottom. And the sovereign of Saddam said to Abram, Give me the people and take the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the sovereign of Saddam, I have lifted my hand to Yahuwah, the most high El, the possessor of the Shemaim and earth, not to take a thread or a sandal strap or whatever is yours, lest you say, I have made Abram rich, except only what the young men have eaten. And the portion of the men who went with me, and Nar, Eshkel, and Mamre, let them take their portion. All right, let's go back up to this. Um, I'm still, I'm still in shock of this. I did any of you guys? Ever, did you guys? Anyone ever know this? I, I taught. Believe, I believe I knew Shem was um, Melchizedek. How did you know this? I believe because I remember that we had read or th- somewhere in one of the other books talking about Shem being. I mean, I did. A, I did a long lesson in Hebrews one time, and I was talking about the Melchizedek priest. I was bringing this back. I had no idea this was actually Shem. I, there was an actual Melchizedek priest back way back then. It was like born of like. Yah or something. He was born of Yah. It was like it was like it's in uh, Jubilees, the very beginning of Jubilees. Like before the flood, he was taken away to like the Garden of Eden, and he like was like. Okay, just... uh, it was Noah's nephew. Noah's nephew. He was taken to the Garden of Eden to like to become pure one day. To become pure one day? No, to appear one day. He's like someday in the future. He hasn't appeared. Yet. I just read Jubilees. Is it Jubilees? No, it's not Jubilees. It's uh, the end of one of the Enochs. Oh, okay. All right, well, thank you guys. I appreciate that. All right, let's continue on here. By uh, the way, the Melchizedek, the way that it has it in this, yeah. one says it is a different language. I was correct. It so. was a different language? Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Okay, and the king of Saddam said to Aram, Give me the souls of the men of my people whom thou hast brought back, and the substance take to thyself. And in the Jerusalem, Jerusalem said, it says, And the treasure take to thee. Great. <laughs> And Abram said, and they have a they have a spelling they have a misspelling right there. Yeah, they had one earlier. It said it said kind. Well, we're we're getting so fluid at uh, rewriting scriptures here. They have it wrong, and I'm not rewriting scriptures. That sounded terrible. Okay, 
And Abraham said to the king of Saddam, I have uplifted my hands in an oath before Yahuwah Elohim, the most high, who for the just possesseth, possesseth his possession of the heavens and the earth. If they thread to the latchet of a sandal, I receive anything of all that is thine, lest thou magnify thyself in saying, I have enriched Abram from my own. Have I not power over all spoil? I have no idea what happened there. Uh, yeah. Apart from what the young men have eaten and the portion of the men who went with me, Anir, Eshkel, and Mamre. All right. And the final part of that says in Jerusalem, if from a thread to the latchet of a sandal, I receive of all that is thing, that thou magnify not thyself and say, I have enriched Abram. All right. Wow. Okay. So this, I, I got to go back to this whole thing on this. Um, Og, the king of Og. Um, oh, king, king, king of Bashan. Yeah, king, what did I say? King of Yeah. Yeah, king of Bashan. Um, king Og. Um, what do we, let's, before we even do any research, what do you guys, what is your gut feeling on if this is real or if this is fake? Since we finished this complete chapter and, you know, we have some lights turn on. I, I had a light turn on for me. I did not know Shim was that Melchizedek priest. I had no idea. Um, so here we go. We get learned every single day. What do you guys think? Yes or no? Did did Og do the rodeo on top of the ark and do it for forty days? Yes or no, kid? Why are we keeping giants? I just don't think. I don't think Og wiped all the giants just to keep one alive. What if it's not the same Og? Is it? Do we know we that, know that it's he a, is a giant? We know this dude was a giant. It says that y'all want to show that there are giants or something. What do you mean he want to show? What does it say in there? What do you mean he wanted to show? He wanted to show people that Yah's power that he can wipe out the giants. So they kept on lying to show people there were giants. Who had been spared from the giants and that died in the deluge. But that. How does the world. Okay. Yeah, and Og came, which had been spared from the giants that died in the deluge and had ridden, protected upon the top of the ark. And sustained with food by Noah, not being spared through high righteousness, but that the inhabitants of the world might see the power of Yahuwah and say, were there not giants who in the first times rebelled against Yahuwah of the world and perished from the earth? But when these kings made war, behold, Og, who was with them, said in his heart, I will go and show Abram concerning Lot, who is led captive, that he may come and deliver him from the hands of the kings into whose hands he had been delivered. Okay. Um, yes or no, Kate? Yes or no, real quick. Let's get this done. I, I want to say no, but I don't know. I can't. Kate's on it with no. Yes or no, Judge? Mm, I would say probably yes for now until we figure out if it's another, it's an, another Og. Miss Nicole, yes or no? What's your, what's your thoughts? I say yes. I, I think, say yes. Okay, we have two yeses. Um, after reading about Shim, I believe that is probably true. Um, I am very concerned that we didn't know about this. I'm very concerned that somehow we have lost this in the translations. And I don't know who to believe. I don't know if we should believe the Targums or we should believe the 66 books we have been presented with that have been highly <laughs> doused with, with all sorts of stuff. So, all right. Well, I guess that's it. Um, guys, let us go into it. Do you have the uh, Uranic Blessing? I do. So before I you right. go any further, yep. the Grand says, how does Shem fill the criteria of the Melchizedek with no mother and father? No mother, no father, no mother. No father, mother. I don't know what she's saying. And then Carla says, I read somewhere that Melchizedek has n was not begotten or had no human parents. Okay, so what happened there was that Melchizedek, that was the, that's talking about the other Melchizedek that's to come. His mother died while she was giving birth to him. Who? Me, the other Melchizedek. The Where is that out of? Uh, at the end of, I think it's 2nd Enoch. 2nd Enoch, okay. So there might be more things that we do not know. You got anything else, the grand on that? Um, or thoughts, guys? Anyone in the chat room on this stuff? Um, I definitely want to get your guys' input and, um, you know, definitely, for sure. Um, turn the chat on here so we can see what's going on. I actually have some questions for Noah now, why we're harboring a giant. It wouldn't be him. It would be Yah that would be harboring the, um, yeah, Makes I don't know. Makes sense why he'd said of every clean animal now. Why? Well, feed this dude. <laughs> feed, the, feed the giant. Yes. Think, dude, I, surely if he's a giant, they're not going to feed him unclean food, right? He, wouldn't you ride, take this guy into the covenant? You wouldn't no, be that's why I said he needs seven of every clean animal. <laughs> Yeah, Dude, he's, like he's, only, he's, he's only like 10 feet tall. We're not talking like 200 feet tall. We're talking like 10, <laughs> 11 foot tall. He's, he's not a... Can, 
tremendously monstrous. So, okay, well, let's um, let us go with this. I think we are good. Um, let's read. We'll finish this off with an ironic blessing, the ironic blessing from Jebs Jaden, who's going to um, read this with authority. And um, we love you guys very, very much, and we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. Um, we will get him reading the ironic blessing, and then we will. Um, uh, Eli, Carla said, are you talking about yes. uh, Noah's nephew? Yes. Is that, is that what you say? Yes. Okay, yes. Um, oh, yeah, and, and yeah, thanks, thanks, Brother Glenn, for keeping it below 30, 30 pages. And your giant words, you make me sound very illiterate, my brother. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I grew up on a farm. I don't know these big words. Okay, so I think that's good. Um, let, us, let us take this from the uh, let's, ironic blessing for Jade. Jade, are you ready? Yep. Okay, let's do this. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying... Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is how you barak the children of Israel. Say to them, Yahuwah barak you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and show favor to you. Yahuwah lift up his face upon you and give you peace. Thus they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I myself shall barak. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, everybody, you know, before, I, before we do this final, this final thing, you know, the, the goal of everything that we're doing here is to not even teach, but to read with you guys and let everybody make your own decisions on the world that we are in. And for me and my house, we want to serve our creator. Our creator's ways are beautiful and they are, they're intense. And when you get in the ways and when you start getting the, the spiritual protection that our creator gives all of us, you start to understand that everything that it says in these words are true. Everything that it says in this, in what he says where the messengers come and take care of us, it's all true. And, you know, I would be the first to testify that when we have 10 pit bulls and we've stayed alive for five years doing what 99% of everyone else ha is not able to do, and that's to keep these pit bulls from killing each other and killing us. And so we have the hand of our messengers that watch us and take care of us and the hands of, the hands of Yah that are, always, that are always with us. And so hopefully you guys find this and hopefully you guys find these lessons um, amazing and we will continue with this. We love you all and let's continue on. Here we go. Oh. 
All right. Goodbye, everybody. We love you guys dearly. Thank you so much. May Yah bless you and keep you. May his light forever shine upon you. May you forever keep in his Torah. And may the, the faith of Messiah Yahushua be with you guys forever. Much love. All right. All right so long. Bye, guys.